This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, people love time travel. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. We're coming up on the new fall TV season, where the overriding theme, there always is one, is reboots. And last year, it was military dramas. Two years ago, the theme was time travel, which made me think of all the examples of time travel in the media. It's always been a popular topic in fiction for centuries, if not millennia. It was generally used as a way to discuss social issues of the time, or maybe just mock them. Memoirs of the 20th Century was a 1733 book about diplomatic letters from 1997 to 98 and was a warning about Jesuits. Golf in the year 2000 shows us a world where men's activities are limited to the links and for some strange reason politics, while masculinized women do the rest. Women's suffrage was a major social discussion of the time. Anno 7603 involved a group sent to the year 7603 AD by a fairy to see a world where gender roles were reversed. Rip Van Winkle in 1819 is the classic story of a man who sleeps 20 years only to find he has been forgotten. Mm -hmm. A Christmas Carol in 1843 provides both past and future time travel via ghosts. Looking backward, 2000 to 1887, from 1887, had a hypnotized man sleep until the year 2000. And familiar to everyone is a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court from 1989, where Mark Twain has a straw man time travel back to, well, King Arthur's time. 1895 brought us H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, a story we'll get back to in just a minute. Armageddon 2019 A.D. from 1928 introduces us to time traveler Buck Rogers. Ray Bradbury's The Sound of Thunder, 1952, explained the butterfly effect. By the 60s, time travel became its own fictional genre, with hundreds of novels and short stories. So, uh, let's move on to films. We already mentioned The Time Machine. A man watches the world rise and fall, ending up in the year 802,601 A.D., where humans have split into the childlike Eloy and the underground Morlocks that prey on them. There have been three film versions. There is a 1960 version with Robert Taylor and Alan Young, the one you've likely seen, with the ornate velvet chair slash time machine. There's also a 1978 made-for-TV movie, and the 2002 version with Guy Pearce. The 1960 version is rather maudlin, and Robert Taylor is serviceable in the main role of George that Alan Young shines playing three roles, Fisbee in 1900, Fisbee's son in 1917, and 1966. The latter roles affected by war, which George sees happen in fast motion during his travels. This is rather unique in time travel. Usually it's instantaneous or the result of a long sleep. The machine itself became the subject of an episode of The Big Bang Theory. Now we also mentioned a Connecticut Yankee, which also had three film versions. A silent version in 1921, a 1931 version starring Will Rogers, and a 1949 musical comedy starring Bing Crosby. 1968 brought us Planet of the Apes, based on a French novel. Astronauts, including Charlton Heston, go off course to what they think is another planet where apes evolve from men. But spoiler, it's actually a future Earth post-nuclear war. Some memorable quotes. Get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! They blew it up! God damn you, they blew it up! Damn you all to hell! And if you think I haven't heard those a million times, you're insane. (laughs) It's been parodied many times from The Simpsons, Stop the Planet of the Apes, I Want to Get Off, to Mad Men. And of course, there were many, many sequels. Beneath the, Escape from, Conquest of, Battle 4, and uh, 70s TV shows, both live action and animated, and of course, the recent cinematic reboot. Woody Allen's Sleeper in 1973 shows a schlubby man of 1973 becoming a hero in a near future fighting a totalitarian government. Time After Time in 1979 turns H.G. Wells into an action hero, chasing Jack the Ripper into modern times 
Malcolm McDowell stars. 1980's The Final Countdown asks the question, what if a modern aircraft carrier is thrown back to December 7, 1941, just in time to stop the Japs? Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen star. This was a period where Hollywood was trying to mesh classic Hollywood tales with the sci-fi explosion caused by Star Wars et al. 1984's Philadelphia Experiment is similar in concept, except the time jump goes into the future. Somewhere in Time, 1980, sees Christopher Reeve, fresh from his Kryptonian role, use self-hypnosis to travel back to meet a girl, Jane Seymour, he sees in a portrait. That one never made sense to me. <laughs> Time Bandits in 1981 comes from the Monty Python School with director Terry Gilliam directing and John Cleese co-starring. A boy runs into time-traveling dwarves looking for loot. The Terminator, 1984, and its various sequels, reboots, and TV series surround a near future where robots have taken over and how the only answer is to go back in time to stop it from happening. And of course it made a star out of Arnold. Of course, it was basically a ripoff of an Outer Limits episode. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> the Back to the Future trilogy, 1985, 89, and 90, turned Michael J. Fox from a TV star to a movie star. It also took us back in time to the 1950s and the 1880s, as well as the far-flung world of 2015. Ooh. The trilogy made almost a billion dollars at the box office and spawned countless commercial tie-ins. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure 1989 has two idiots, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, receive a time machine because their high school band ends up transforming a future society, and so they're given that as a gift, so that they can complete a school history project. Because if they don't, they don't graduate and the band doesn't become big. I watched that and remember nothing about it. <laughs> I had to look it up on Wikipedia. A sequel, TV shows, comics, and theme park rides came out of it. Army of Darkness, in 1992, is part of the Evil Dead franchise with Bruce Campbell going back to 1300 A.D. to find the Necromicon. Groundhog Day, 1993, introduced the concept of a time loop, with Bill Murray trapped celebrating the same day over and over and wooing Andy McDowell by trial and error. Time Cop, in 1984, is a Jean-Claude Van Damme vehicle, and his beat is to protect the past and the future. Pleasantville, 1998, has teams uh, Tommy McGuire and Reese Witherspoon sent to a mythical 50s black-and-white TV town by magical TV repairman Don Knotts. Frequency, in 2000, uses a ham radio to connect Dennis Quaid and Jim Caviezel over a 30-year span. And that was made into a TV show yeah. just recently. Yeah. The Butterfly Effect, in 2004, stars Ashton Kutcher. Remember when he was a movie star? as a man who can supernaturally inhabit his young self to change the past and screw up the present as a result. Idiocracy 2006 stars Luke Wilson, who is chosen as an average American for a government experiment. He winds up 500 years later as the smartest man on Earth. How? Well, the rest of the world has become stupid because smart people realized overpopulation was a problem, but dumb people did not. It could be argued that it won't take 500 years to reach that point, and we may be entering it already. The Time Traveler's Wife in 2009 stars Eric Bana as a man who jumps forward in time due to a genetic defect, which causes problems in his marriage. Safety Not Guaranteed in 2002 is a tiny budgeted film where a classified ad seeking a time travel companion changes the life of Aubrey Plaza. Actual time travel only occurs in the very last scene, and it's questionable even then. Looper, in 2012, sees the mob using time travel to clean up issues, in this case, sending Joseph Gordon-Levitt to kill his older self, Bruce Willis. It's rather confusing. Edge of Tomorrow, in 2014, has Tom Cruise fighting aliens in a time loop and restarting every time he dies, like a video game. And there's plenty more, but let's jump over to TV. There were certainly series that touched on time travel, like The Twilight Zone and Star Trek, but we're going to limit this to shows where that's the main focus. The Time Tunnel, 1966-67, was an Irwin Allen production, Mr. Disaster. A secret government time travel project goes awry, sending James Darren and Robert Colbert into the time stream, conveniently landing each week at a critical event, mostly on backlots or existing film sets, using stock footage while Whit Bissell and Lee Merriweather watch through a literal tunnel. It's About Time, in 1966-67, to 67, 
and see even then TV networks did concepts and cl clusters is a Sherwood Schwartz slapstick comedy from the man who brought us Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch where as the theme song explains it's about time it's about space, about two men in the strangest place. It's about time, it's about flight, traveling faster than the speed of light. Here is their tale of the brave crew, as through the barrier of time they flew to this ancient site, that being prehistoric Earth, where they befriend cavemen. The show quickly tanked, and flipping the script, bringing the cavemen back to 1966, did not help. Quantum Leap from 89 to 93 stars Scott Bakula, who inhabits the bodies of people in the past, righting wrongs and learning a lesson or two. He's helped out by an AI named Al, a hologram only he can see, played by Dean Stockwell. Life on Mars, 2006 to 2007, is a British series where a modern police detective involved in an auto, auto accident finds himself in 1973 still as a cop. Now, you really like that show. Yeah, they remade it as an American show, too. Yeah. So, we see the inverse of this on Continuum in 2012 to 2015, where a detective from 2077 finds herself thrown back to 2012, now catching criminals from the future. Outlander, which began in 2014, sees 1945 British nurse Catalonia Balfe swept back to 1743, where she meets and marries Scottish warrior Sam Hugan, and is based on a series of books. Of course, this... CW DC comic series tend to deal with time travel, especially The Flash, but Legends of Tomorrow in 2016 to now is all about it. A team of DC heroes and villains band together with Rip Hunter, played by Arthur Darvel, to fix problems in the time stream. The show was rather pedestrian until one of the precepts of time travel fiction, that changes in time have consequences, was basically thrown out of the window, turning the show into a hoot to watch. A big boss fight this past season involved a demon and a faux Teddy Ruxpin. Who won the fight? And we mentioned the 2016 plethora of time travel series, and this was only one of three. Time After Time was a TV reboot of the 1979 film. Timeless, 2016 and ongoing now, involves yet another government project gone awry, as well as a shadowy conspiracy throughout history, leaving a small team to stop the bad guys from changing history. And this series is still in question as to whether it's going to continue or not. They still haven't made the call. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we didn't forget. Doctor Who, 1963 to 1989, 2005 and ongoing. A show that started as a way to educate kids about history quickly turned into a sci-fi mainstay in the UK and later in the US. An alien and his human companion, or companions, go through time in what looks like a British police box, which is much larger on the inside, and save the day and the universe. Invention being the mother of necessity and ill health of original lead William Hartnell created the idea of regeneration, that the doctor would live multiple lives changing into a different actor each time. We're on Doctor Number 13, Jodie Whittaker, the first female in the role, today. The show ran for decades on the BBC, only stopping due to an ill-planned film project, then restarting with a much larger budget a few years later. We could talk about Doctor Who for a whole episode, and we have. So, as you see, there's a, just a, a boatload of time travel. It's something that is an evergreen concept and will continue to be generated in films and TVs and books and video games and whatever else. Right. And you can travel through time by checking out old episodes of our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mark. And I'm Mindy. Thanks for watching. Alonzi!